Hey y'all, TRG here, and in this video, I'll be talking about why I expect a hyperactive hurricane season as we go into late August, of course, into September, as well as early October. Let's go right on into today's video. Starting out here with the Climate Prediction Center, they already have a 20% chance for tropical cyclone development to occur as we go towards the extreme latter half of July into primarily early August, as well as a better chance of tropical cyclone development in the eastern Pacific as we go through that time frame as well. We're probably going to be looking at a near average, if not close to below average, eastern Pacific hurricane season, and we are looking at a well above average hurricane season in the Atlantic and a potential hyperactive hurricane season out there in the Atlantic. And I am expecting a hyperactive hurricane season. I'll tell you why in just a second. So here's your Nino index, and you can see we are beginning to leave that El Nino phase going into a neutral phase. And over the last week or two, we're starting to plummet into that La Nina phase. So we are currently, and the CPC has confirmed this, we're in a neutral phase, which doesn't favor the Eastern Pacific or the uh, Atlantic hurricane season. It's kind of neutral between the both. But now we're starting to plummet into that La Nina phase, and that's eventually going to become a La Nina. I imagine we'll be in a La Nina by the time we go towards September. Uh, again, we're expecting more of a weaker La Nina to develop. So in my opinion, I do believe the Eastern Pacific hurricane season is going to be a little bit more active than we, than we originally anticipated. Uh, about three or four months ago, we were anticipating us to be in a strong La Nina by now, which would be, you know, kicking off our Atlantic hurricane season big time at this moment. Uh, however, we're just now starting to see signs of us divoting into that La Nina phase. And we're still not full-fledged diving just yet, but we're starting to get into the process of a La Nina. So this is your temperatures across the globe, and of course we are really, really warm out there in the Atlantic. Not going to be an issue. I mean, I don't even think we have to look at sea surface temperatures this year until we get towards like November. The main thing that's holding this season down at the moment, which is expected by the way, I know this is the time frame a lot of people are screaming bust on a hurricane season. It's the Saharan dust. So we basically have a bunch of dry air that is infiltrating the main development region, which is generally out in this vicinity here and that is tampering our hurricane season just a little bit now that is to be expected if we start to see that in september we may have to start to come down on those hurricane totals a little bit uh, but we should get rid of that dust as we go towards the latter half of july which we're already july 20th or july 21st actually uh, so as we go towards like july 30th july 31st that dust should start to settle and then as we go into early august we'll probably have a chance for a tropical storm and then mid-august and especially late august into september we should see things explode in activity and the eastern pacific that's quiet for the moment uh, i mean we have a little bit of aoi activity currently but it's really not anything to worry about that's going to really start to spark up again as we go into probably early august mid-august for the eastern pacific so this season should increase a little bit sooner uh, than our atlantic thanks to our saharan dust that's going to kind of tamper down the atlantic season for not but about a month more or so. Um, I mean, we're, we should be full-fledged by mid-August. I don't see a way how we're not looking at AOIs in mid-August for the uh, Atlantic hurricane season. You can see right in this area, that is your La Nina beginning to take shape. So those temperatures are beginning to plummet again. Uh, you can see that on the sea surface temperature anomalies. Before we dive on into the rest of today's video, I ask that you guys please go ahead and hit that like button and share this video with your family, friends, social media to help spread weather awareness. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button with the post notification bell set to all so you know when I go live or upload a video. Let's go right back on into today's video. See all that blue? That is a La Nina cooling sea surface temperatures beginning to occur out there off the coastline, western northwestern coastline of South America. So we're going into that La Nina phase. At the same time, our Saharan dust is beginning to weaken, like I said, mid to late August, we should start to pop off in the Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, long story short, again, very active Atlantic hurricane season and probably an average uh, Eastern Pacific hurricane season. So here's the Atlantic hurricane and tropical storm activity based on data from 1944 to 2020. And of course, we are sitting at late July here, right about this black point here. We're going to start seeing a very slow climate activity as we go into late July, really late July, into more of early August. And then, of course, we're going to have a, just a little lull of activity probably just before these storms really begin to pop off. So I think we'll have one system to watch, maybe two systems to keep an eye on as we go through early to mid-August. And then late August, that is when our hyper 
for activity should begin. So as we go through like August 15th all the way into probably October 15th, we should have that quite hyperactive hurricane period. And then of course in mid-October, we plummet drastically in our hurricane activity. So again, hyperactive hurricane season. I'm expecting a hyperactive hurricane season from about the middle portion of August all the way through about the middle portion of October, a solid about month or two, a solid two months of activity where we should be at a hyperactive standpoint in our hurricane season. So if you haven't already, make sure you have those hurricane preparedness plans ready to go as we are diving headfirst into hurricane season. Here's NOAA's hurricane forecast for this season. They are calling for 17 to 25 named storms, 8 to 13 hurricanes, and 4 to 7 major hurricanes. And of course, we're looking at an 85% chance of an above average hurricane season. I don't see a way how that near normal 10% or that below normal 5% verifies. Here's some few other numbers for you. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my face cam so you can see all of them correctly. So this is going to be your named storms at the top, your hurricanes in the middle, and then your major hurricane predictions at the bottom. So I am forecasting. This is a forecast from about three months ago. I'm going to stick with it, even though I would like to lower the numbers a bit due to some newer data. I'm still calling for 26 named storms, 14 hurricanes, 7 major. CSU is calling for 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, five major. That is a much better forecast, probably going to verify on the CSU's portion of things. And the average hurricane season is 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, and three majors. So just to kind of show you this all over again, this is your average and then this is at CSU. You can see all the numbers are higher. On my end, all the numbers are higher. And then if we go back over to NOAA's forecast, their low end is still higher than the average amount of hurricanes we see each year. Now I want to dive on into some model data. This is going to be your GFS deterministic model run from last night. Let's go ahead and pull this all the way forward. And you can see the GFS does not have a single type of tropical storm activity occurring anywhere in the main development region into the Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean. So that doesn't mean we're not going to see any development from now all the way to August 5th. It just means that the GFS isn't picking up on it. So there shouldn't be anything major to keep an eye on in the Atlantic until we go towards that July 30th first time frame, then we will have to continue to keep a very, very close eye on the model run. So at the moment, they're quiet. We're not seeing much activity on any model run data whatsoever. We went over that in yesterday's live stream. So just keeping an eye on it. So here's your relative humidity, which is partially going to pick up on your dust activity and just keep an eye on the main development region. So here's your main development region. Once we see all that blue move to the north, that's when we really got to keep an eye on uh, the potential for any spin up activity. And you can see that dust stays in place. I mean, we stay with a bunch of dust and dry uh, atmosphere out here in the main development region throughout the entirety of this GFS model run. So that is fantastic news. That just means that the dust is going to keep this uh, a little bit on the less active side of things. But there you go. Look at that. So towards the end of the model run, as you go into August 1st, you can see that dust is starting to light up in this area here. And it's probably going to continue to light up as we go through August 5th. And we'll eventually have a favorable environment that develops generally somewhere in this area, probably pushing up closer towards Cuba and Jamaica. So again, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. So here's your CANSIPS for August. And of course, wow, shocker, it has an above average anomaly for precipitation throughout this entire area here. So again, we are expecting a very active hurricane season. If you're on the immediate coastline in the U.S., this includes anywhere from, of course, Texas all the way up towards the coastline of Virginia. Make sure you have that hurricane preparedness plan in place as we are looking at a very active to hyperactive hurricane season. So here's our ensemble model data from the GEFS mean MSLP, which is basically just showing you your pressure anomalies and a given area of potential interest for tropical development. And uh, I guarantee that this is going to show a lot of inactivity all the way until like mid-August, because I really don't think we're going to pop off uh, until mid-August into late August, thanks to that dust. So don't be surprised if we have just like one or two systems to watch for the next half month or even the next month. Uh, it's it should be late August into all of September when that activity pops up. But look at that. Um, that comes from the Yucatan Peninsula, doesn't it? Yeah, so there's uh, some agreement here on this 
ensemble model data that we have the potential for a tropical uh, cyclone to develop somewhere in the Gulf, uh, west to northwestern side of Cuba as well. We'll see if that stays there. Uh, this is all the way towards August 3rd, August 4th. So right in that time frame where the CPC has a 20% chance for development out near the Cuba area into all of, um, or I should say, most of the northern Caribbean. And it, it has pretty good agreement there. Look at that just above my face cam for August 6th and 7th, just off the coastline of Texas. Uh, now, this is far away, so I highly doubt that this will stay here this long. But uh, it, it's interesting to note. And there it is on August 12th and August 14th. So, yeah, the kind of the area I have circled here on your screen looks to be the area of interest for the majority of uh, from now all the way towards like August 20th. And then look as we go towards August 20th. Now, again, this is the end of the model run. So we don't want to take this seriously. But look at that. As we go towards August 20th, notice how you're starting to see a lot more signals of that main development region beginning to open up uh, and also into that Caribbean as well. So I think it's probably going to be more of that... Um, that action we saw with the first name storm, uh, I, what was it, Albert or something like Albert, something like that, uh, where, where we see the potential for a tropical system off of South uh, America moving towards the Yucatan Peninsula. And then once it gets into that Gulf of uh, Mexico, it has the potential to spin up into a tropical system. So I don't see anything major on the model runs, but I'm still seeing the potential for a hyperactive hurricane season regardless. Uh, so late August into primarily September and especially into as well as uh, really all of September, maybe even into early October as well. So September looks to be the month. That looks to be the biggest activity, the biggest opportunity for significant development uh, throughout the entirety of that main development region area. So we'll see what happens. We'll keep an eye on it, y'all. And uh, that's going to be it for today's video. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Just a quick rundown, brief recap. We're looking at a hyperactive hurricane season, most likely beginning in the middle portion of August, before the middle portion of August. August, we could still see some spin-up tropical activity. The most likelihood of that occurring is going to be on the northern side of the Lesser Antilles into the Gulf of Mexi Mexico, generally in this area here. I based that off of the ensemble model run here, the CANSIPS, as well as uh, the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, then as we go into mid to late August, we'll have to see what the model runs show in mid-August once we get towards that time frame. It's still about near a month away, uh, but I anticipate that main development region will be... Uh, well active by the time we go into mid and late August. So still an active hurricane season looks to be an active hurricane season. Uh, we're going to go from inactive to just an explosion of tropical activity in the matter of probably a week. So just make sure you're ready for that. Make sure you are prepared. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video and or live stream. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Watch severe weather in the tropics. Goodbye.